Hi everyone, Rosemary here, and in today's video I have one of my favorites. Look for less duplicates of high-end pieces, and today I'll be taking on some beautiful home decor items from Anthropology. And for the first one I get to practice my French with Le Mieux et Compagnie Palette Pillar Candle Holder, retailing for $275. Okay, this is going to be a messy one. So, fair warning, pull those sleeves up and get those gloves on. I'm going to start with this Dollar Tree vase. Now, these come in all different colors. I did wipe it down with some vinegar, and now I'm going to just spray paint it with some of this ultra matte black spray paint. Next, I took a whole big bunch of this cotton twine from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to place it in some of this wood stain in the color Gunstock. I just placed it there in a jar, and then just stuck the cotton twine inside, and kind of squished it all around, ringed it out, and just make sure that all of the twine is being covered by the stain. Now, when I opened it up there, I could see there was still some white there in the middle, so I did go back and add a little more stain, again, just kind of squishing it through, making sure that I get all of the twine covered in the stain. Then once I'm sure everything's covered, I just wanna take the twine back out, and now I'm kind of just removing the excess. So as I roll it back up uh, around my fingers, I'm pulling the string as I'm doing that, and that's taking off the excess stain off of the twine. And yes, I was getting stain everywhere, as you can see, so make sure that your surface is covered. But that's okay because I'll also be using this Dollar Tree wood box with the drawer and I just uh, want to stain that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and lap up that stain right off the surface and stain the box. Next, I'm going to be going back to my vase that has been painted now and I'm going to just brush on some glue. Now I'm using this Type Bond Quick and Thick, but you can use any craft glue like tacky glue or even regular glue. You can let it air dry a little bit so that it's a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to just start attaching my twine and I'm going to just add that there to the bottom and just wind it around the vase adding more glue as I go and again this is one messy project but you know it's good it's good to get in there make a mess color outside the lines you know leave caution to the wind just make sure you have gloves and surfaces covered that you don't want to get all that messed up and then you'll see how I just kind of continue to go along and uh, as the glue pops up in between the string I just kind of you know smooth it out on top of the string and then just bring it up there to the top uh, ending it off and um, just kind of squishing it there into the glue and uh, finishing off that top piece and then I just kind of went back because everything was kind of you know popping up in between the strings like I said before and just kind of smoothed it all out to make sure I had a nice and even finish and then once it was dry this is what it looked like and you can see how the string mimics the carved lines of the original but I did have a problem the string had soaked up more of the stain and made it darker than the box now I could have played with some more of the stain but I opted to just use some brown craft paint that I diluted pretty thin uh, creating almost a stain with the brown craft paint and then I just kind of uh, painted that over now you'll see where it does come up close to that uh, same color of the vase but um, right here it's still wet but because it is so thin it will still dry and you still will be able to see the lines of the wood grain underneath now somehow I lost the footage of the next steps but it's easy because all I did was took some black multi-surface paint and gave a fresh coat of black paint there to the top and then I took the two pieces and glued them together with some E6000 glue and then I just did a coat of varnish all over the entire piece. And then here you can see the two pieces, the original and the dollar dupe side by side. The dollar dupe did come out a little bit darker. We had to make that adjustment for the extra saturation of the stain, but all in all, I think it came out pretty good. Moving on to project two, I'm going to take a stab at the Tamara vase, retailing for $240. For the next one, I'm again going to be using one of the Dollar Tree wood boxes. Also this Life Water recycled water bottle. Smart Water brand also comes in this size bottle and shape. Next, I'm going to use some pliers to remove the point between the petals on the flower. I'll just grab the point with the pliers and snap it off. This is making the hole larger and rounder so I can place the bottle top inside. 
But before I do that, I'm going to want to remove the bottom of the bottle. And to do that, I'm going to use a utility knife and slowly cut along the bottom. There's a line there at the bottom and I'll just follow that line to remove the bottom of the bottle. Next, I'm going to just peel off the label and then I'm going to take some sandpaper and round off any of the sharp edges where I cut the bottom of the bottle. I'll also use some sandpaper to smooth out the hole in the box. Before putting the bottle back in, I'm just going to fill the drawer with some floral foam and place that back into the box. I'll then use my pliers to make a hole in the foam for the bottle cap. Next, I'll use some spackle to fill the spaces in the box. I'll go all around the edges and then also in the middle. I tried to get it as smooth as possible and also dipped my finger in some water to help thin the spackle out a little bit and get the smoothest finish. Once the spackle was dry, I just further smoothed out the finish with some sandpaper, just lightly going all the way around. And then I also used a Q-tip dipped in water to get into the little spaces around the cap. And now come along as I take you on my ill-fated paint journey. First, starting with this chalk spray paint in the color chiffon cream. Eh. Nope, that didn't work. Ended up leaving little specks in the finish, so I thought, okay, I'll just use this regular satin finish spray paint in ivory. Eh. This was better finish-wise, but it wasn't giving me the texture that I needed. So I decided instead of continuing with the spray paint, I should just brush paint with some multi-surface paint. I did thin it out with some water because I want it to be really thin. I don't want to have any stroke marks and I am using a foam brush as well. Then I went back with the ivory satin on top again. And then here it is after the brush coat and now I will go and spray it with the spray paint. And then here it is after three light coats of the spray paint. Now you can still see some of those little specks from the original chalk paint. But um, if I were going to do this again, I would say do a powder coat of the spray paint first, just get a nice tacky uh, surface, and then do the brushed coat thinned with uh, water, and then back again with about three coats of the spray paint on top, and I think you can get a really nice finish. And then here is a look at the two pieces together, the original there on the left at $240, and then the dollar dupe comes in at about $4. I think project three may be my favorite because look how cute this Minka textured pot is. And at $68 compared to the first two, it's a relative steal. But let's see if we can try to replicate something close a little cheaper. If you saw my vintage Christmas video, you may have seen how I abandoned this Goodwill glass canister for a taller, skinnier canister to make a vintage lantern. But I'm happy to say that today is this canister's day to shine. And its co-stars are going to be some adhesive pearl wrap from the Dollar Tree, as well as a Dollar Tree mop head and some Dollar Tree pom-poms. I'm going to also make sure this canister is nice and clean and wipe it down with some vinegar to prep the surface. Next, I'm going to cut the adhesive wrap into strips and I'm going to cut the strips four rows wide. So I'm going to count four rows of pearls and then cut and then count another four rows and then cut. And then once I have my strips cut, I'm going to just go ahead and apply them right to the side of the canister. I'm going to start the first row there right below the lip of the canister. Just apply it there to the side and then I'll take a second strip and start that one where the first one left off, just lining up those pearls, bringing it around to where uh, the end is and then cut it off in that spot. Next, I'm going to take some of my tight bond glue, and I do get that at Lowe's. I believe Home Depot also sells, and I'll just put a strip there at the bottom of the pearls, and then use that to attach one of the mop strands, and I'll just pull that all the way around the outside of the canister. Then I'll adhere another strip of pearls, and then just alternate that pattern, pearls, mop strands, pearls, mop strands, all the way down the canister. And then once it's finished, it'll look something like this. And then the next step will be to paint the surface. And to paint, I'm going to use one of my favorite combinations, which is spackle and paint. And I'm gonna do this in a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm just gonna take some of that Dollar Tree spackle, put it into a little Cool Whip container here, and then add the paint in equal measure. 
uh, do you want it to be, you know, one of the thinner sides? I do, when I use this paint, I usually will use it in different combinations, but this one's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. And then um, it's thin enough for me to get into all those little nooks and crannies. I'm also sp paying special attention to get it inside where the uh, string is, where the mop string is, so that it is in those little crevices all the way around. And then I'll just finish up the top, painting a couple coats of the paint there all around the lip. And then once my first coat had dried, I did go back and add a second coat of the paint all over the surface. And now it's time to get messy again. So what I want to do here is add the little pom-poms. And I did go ahead and pre-mark the spaces so I don't have them you know, bumping on top of each other. When I get to the other side, I'm going to use the little pom-poms. And now I'm going to dip them right into the paint and just kind of squish them around and, and wring them out. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of glue there to the spot that I marked and then add my messy little pom-pom. And I'm going to go ahead and continue to do this um, all the way. I'm going to do probably about three or four rows here and then I'll start going down from there because these are wet and they're going to need to dry on each side. So what I'll do is I'll create one section, let it dry, and then move on to the other sections after that. And then here you can see that first section where I applied the pom-poms all the way down. And so I'm going to let that dry before moving on to the next sections. And then here it is about three quarters of the way done. Now I just wanted to point out that I did go ahead and add a top row there up by the lip. When I looked at the original, it did go all the way up to the top. So I don't know what I was thinking, but you see, I have a little bit more to finish there, but I'm going to continue adding that top row. And now here it is next to the original. However, the photo is a little flat, so it's not really giving you a great idea of the texture. However, you could see that in the film footage previously that the texture really did come out nice. And I have to say, that poor abandoned canister is looking pretty good. Take that, you tall skinny canister that ran off with her lid nonetheless. Because I kind of had to use it because I already was doing the DIY and I already finished that part. And Anyway, she's looking good. And then for the last project, I'm going to be making some of these ceramic meditation bells. To make, I'm going to be using a couple of terracotta pots from Dollar Tree. These do come two for a dollar. And then I'm going to paint those with some chalk paint. Now I am going to be painting in neutral colors, unlike the original. And that's the beauty of doing things DIY. It's not always just for expense, but you can custom make them to the colors and other preferences that you like. Now the colors I chose were cashew and hazelnut from Waverly and I will be painting each pot with two coats of paint. For the ringer, I'm going to be using the handles from my foam brushes. Now I do always keep these because they are great for DIY projects. And I'm just going to go ahead with some of the stain from the previous project and coat those up, give them a nice stained finish. For the hanger, I'm going to be using this twine rope. Now I did, I believe, buy this originally at Joann's, but uh, actually the Dollar Tree thinner twine is probably closer to what's used in the original. But again, I just prefer this one. I think it's going to look better for my taste. And so again, you get to customize things the way you would prefer when you're doing things DIY. And so what I'm going to do is cut about a three foot piece of the rope. And then I'm going to take some of the masking tape, just cut off a little piece, and then I want to uh, tape that to both ends of my rope. Then I'm going to thread the one end through the hole in the bottom of the pot and bring that out to the other side and then I want to tie off at about an inch and a half from the bottom. Next I'm going to take my foam brush handle and I'm going to just add a little E6000 glue there into the hole and then I'm going to take that one end that I had threaded through the pot and stick that into the hole and that's going to create again the ringer and then that knot will stop it from going through the hole again and then I'm going to take the rope and tie a knot there at the top of the of the pot. Next I'm going to start adding the beads so what I'm going to do is create a third knot now probably about another inch and a half above the top of the pot and then I'll use the other end of my rope to thread my bead. 
So there we put the first bead in and then tie a knot there and then add a second bead on top of that and add a knot. And then to keep with the design of the original, I'm going to go ahead and maybe put about 8-10 inches in between those two and add a third knot, I'm sorry, a third bead there at the top, again, knotting each side. And then I just repeat the process with the other pot. And then here are the dollar dupe meditation bells next to the originals. And of course they are in the neutral colors, but you can easily paint them in the brighter shades if that's what you prefer. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this dollar dupe DIY video, recreating some beautiful anthropology home decor pieces. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give a big thumbs up and please let me know in the comments which one was your favorite and if you also enjoy these types of videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on FabTax where we're putting the extra and ordinary one DIY at a time.